as well as current markets. For those who have not attended one of our webinars in the past, I am Jim Bodie, and on the other side of your screen is Ben Beck, who is also the firm's chief investment officers, and we are the co-founders of Beck Bodie. Just a few quick housekeeping items before we get started. We'd love to answer as many additional questions as possible. At the bottom of your screen, there is a chat, a chat box where you can type in your questions. Um, you will also be receiving an email with the opportunity to set up meetings with one of the advisors on our teams. So Ben, anything else you wanna add before we get going? Uh, not, not, not anything crazy. I just, wanna, I just wanna welcome everybody as well. I can't believe it is the fall already. This is pretty crazy. We've got pumpkin spice season in full swing. My wife's got her pumpkin spice coffee. Maybe you guys are drinking one right now as uh, you're watching uh, Jim and me. Um, and uh, just love this time of year. Wanted to say it, just a quick hello and give our thoughts to uh, our folks, our clients and friends in Florida. Um, obviously with the hurricane, we've got some folks that are really battling some tough conditions down there. So Jim and I also wanted to uh, send our best to everyone um, that is impacted by the recent hurricane and let, and let you know we're, we're thinking about you. Um, and I uh, want to just welcome everybody uh, to today's webinar. Jim, I, I'll tell, it was interesting thinking about as we're doing this webinar again, I don't know if you remember this, but when we were doing these in 2020 as a result of, of quarantine and everything setting in, I don't know if you remember, we did one right around Easter. And because we're in quarantine, there was a life-size a guy in an Easter bunny big costume that was going around our neighborhood. And right in the middle of our webinar at that time, he came to the door and the kids went absolutely crazy. So we're on a webinar like this. If, if some of you folks were, were watching, uh, then, and all of a sudden, totally just like interrupted. But I, I was thinking about that last night as we were thinking about this webinar. I don't know if you remember that, but. Well, it's, it's, uh, that's what happens when we have kids when we work from home. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, let's, let's take back a, a step here and, and talk about the last nine to 12 months of, of what's been happening. Um, you mentioned 2020 as a, let's, we can almost start there, which is now mm -hmm. over two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, love to, to review where we've been and, and where we are now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And I think that's a good place to start because a lot of what we think, and I don't think it's a stretch of what we're experiencing today and over the past year in the markets that have been volatile, stems a lot from the impact that the pandemic has had on the economy, the, the ensuing shutdown of the economy, and then a multiple number of things that have happened during that time and since then that have created the, the pressures, which I think we've all experienced uh, over the last nine to 12 months. So a few of those things are, um, in particular, the shutdown itself, right? You know, the economy shut down, resulting in the Fed, the government taking aggressive actions to inject liquidity, inject money, make money available to support the economy while Geez, it, it, in my mind, it seems so long ago, just a couple of years ago, but figuring out things that nobody knew. How long was this pandemic going to last? How, uh, how long was it going to take to, to develop vaccines and boosters and so on and so forth? Flashing forward a little bit more, um, with all that liquidity in the economy created, um, or was one of the bigger creators, there are other pressures out there of the inflation numbers that we've been seeing over the past year as well. And so inflation has been a, a, certainly a tax on the economy and is on consumers like you and me. And that's created some pressure too. The Federal Reserve in, in turn has responded with trying to now control that inflation and pull some of that money back out of the economy. And they do so by raising interest rates. And I'd say, uh, here at Beck Bodhi, we all agree that this is absolutely, positively the right thing to do. Despite the pain, the discomfort that any investor has experienced over the past year, the threat of higher inflation going forward and, and the detrimental effects of what that does uh, to your cost of living as time goes along, we would much prefer 
uh, the Federal Reserve taking aggressive action to rein in that inflation as quickly as possible, raise interest rates for a certain amount of time, and bring those inflation numbers back down to, for example, the historical average. The threat there, of course, and I think what has been priced in certainly to the markets is how far does the Fed go in their campaign to raise interest rates and stamp out this inflation? And if they perhaps go too, too far, and whatever that means remains to be seen, uh, what does that do to the economy in terms of perhaps an elongated recession or so on? So those are all threats. Those aren't facts. Those are just the, the things that we've seen. Some of them are facts, things we've seen in the past. And then the expectation, okay, what, what, what's going to happen? These are the pressures that we're facing, I think, over the next, uh, over the last nine to 12 months. And collectively, we all feel that the Fed is doing the right thing about being rather aggressive and attacking what is, I think, the biggest threat by far, which is inflation. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one thing that we all focus on is, is that what the U.S. is doing, but this is absolutely a, a global issue that we're dealing with right now. Um, COVID didn't just hit the United States. The world was shut down for an extended period of time. Uh, and the one thing you didn't mention here, Ben, was Ukraine and Russia and the impact sure. that that they are having right now on on the global economy. Anything you want to add about Ukraine and Russia? Yeah, and certainly. Just to just to maybe reiterate what you said is is certainly that has been amongst others, as I mentioned, that that has been a significant pressure uh, over the past year as well. The uncertainty around that conflict and the disruptions that any conflict mm -hmm. can create when you when you have economies of of that size and and uh, you have threats like that, geopolitical or otherwise. So certainly very valid and, and certainly something that I think has had a had an effect on the on the economy and the markets this year for sure. Yeah, and I, and I and I think one of the questions many of the people on on this webinar have today is is how does Beck Bodhi as a company react to the types of markets we're experiencing now? What are we doing about it? What's our thoughts on on where we are and how we're handling this? Anything you want to add there? Yeah, no, it's a question that we've certainly been sent over the last week or so. Like, how are we reacting, right? And the, mm -hmm. and the bottom line is we actually don't react at all. And let me tell you a little bit more about what I mean by that. So here in New England, which a good portion of our clients live and, and work and such, um, we have our beloved New England Patriots football team, right? And of course, the New England Patriots aren't off to the greatest of starts so far this year. But that question, as I've, I've gotten a few of them this week, reminds me of the Super Bowl 2017, if I'm not mistaken, when they played the Atlanta Falcons. And by the third quarter, I think they were actually down 28 to three at one point. Of course, we all know what happened. Patriots came back and won in overtime. Unbelievable. Um, why it makes me think of that Super Bowl is because when we get questions like, what are you doing to react to what's going on? We're doing the same thing that the Patriots and the Bill Belichick did throughout the entire game. When they go into preparing for a game or even preparing for a season, they're preparing a game plan. And despite what may happen during the game, certain plays are called, certain plays are not called, but they don't do anything that they haven't practiced over and over and over again. Jim, you could actually you know, tell this story better than me. Jim, for those of you who don't know, was an all-conference lineman for Northeastern University um, in college. And I think you could probably tell that story better than me that, you know, nothing is done off the cuff necessarily in a game and nothing for Beck Bodie is done off the cuff when it comes to our clients, uh, 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 hard earned uh, uh, money, their finances, their investments. We establish a plan, mm. which preceding that is actually identifying what the actual, what our clients actual goals and objectives are. We established the plan to help meet those goals and objectives. And then and only then we create a portfolio to fund that plan in the same way that a, a football coach or, or anybody out there establishes the game plan yeah. and then executes. The Patriots did not do in that Super Bowl, for example, anything tremendously different that's outside the game plan. They had some trouble in the first half executing. They had a few things that didn't go their way. They got into deficit. They continued to execute on that game plan. Things started to turn their way. 
And that created the positivity, of course, that, that led them to actually winning that game. The markets are no different. We all know the markets go up and down. These bear markets, the last webinars that you've seen me on, I had a lot more hair, right? So they're stressful for everybody, of course, but they're occasional and they're temporary. We execute on our game plan, which takes shape of our, for many of our clients, our growth and our income growth strategies, which I'm going to pause for any comments you made, but I can certainly go into what we're doing on a daily basis, continually executing on, on the strategies. No, I think you're absolutely right. Our game plan has not changed. And, and I often get the question of what, what, what has changed with what our current, what is happening in the current markets. And I said, well, some things stay the same and some things are changing. And what I mean by that is our investment philosophy, which I'll ask Ben to go into in a second, has absolutely stayed the same. We have not deviated from what Beck Bodhi um, does as a company on the investment side. What has changed, however, is the future expectation of the companies that each of us own in our portfolios that we are actively managing each of our accounts. And I'd love for you to, to expand a little bit more on, on those strategies, Ben, just as a quick reminder for everybody. Sure, absolutely. So, so the bellwether strategies the, the, of Beck Bodhi are our growth strategy and our income growth strategy. And the growth strategy uh, um, at a high level, we identify a diversified portfolio of individual companies that our analysts, our analysis expects to be good companies turning into great companies. And we define that by rising earnings estimates. In other words, our analysts are expecting these companies to be earning more money 12 months from now, 18 months from now than they are today. And we have a process in place that answers the three questions. What do you buy? When do you sell? Where do you reinvest the proceeds? So that when a company, which there's no facts about the future, as we all know. So there are companies that go through very, very good times and then things change and they, 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 they mature a little bit and, and they may not be earning as much money. So we have a strict sell discipline that we implement when the earnings estimates change. And then we have a company to reinvest those proceeds into when those estimates do change the downside. And that is an ongoing process to what Jim described as we're not reacting, we're continuing on that process. So our growth strategy focuses on great companies whose earnings are growing substantially. Our income growth strategy, as the name implies income, is more focused on stability, more focused on income, where we're tracking dividend growth estimates of companies, particularly in the utility space, one of the most stable parts of the stock market as a whole. And we're looking for companies, of course, that analysts expect to widely expect to raise their dividend by a significant amount. Why is that? Well, that goes back to what we talked about before of that we our biggest threat as an investor myself, as investors, many of you on this call, I know it's a general audience, but uh, if you're an investor at all, you know that as we said, one of the greatest threats to your um, portfolio and such is the cost of living in your own life. And so we want to make sure that the portfolio reflects what I think is a fact, at least historically, is that your cost of living is always going to rise. Your portfolio has to reflect the fact that your cost of living is always going to rise to make sure that you don't outlive your money, of course. And so those are our, those are our two bellwether strategies. We continually execute. Analysts change their minds and we execute the buys and sells on an occasional basis to reflect the changes of opinion in some of the smartest minds out there in the street. Yeah, I want you to expand a little bit on that and talking about the biggest threats for long-term investors and, and kind of your thoughts around there just for just just to kind of hit that point home a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so we talked about inflation, um, and we talked about historically speaking, that these bear markets come about. And I'll expand on that. In in this in that four out of every five, roughly four out of every five calendar years, the markets are positive historically. And to dig a little bit further, there we face a tough, really tough market on average historically of course, one in every five years. And that tough market, as we define as a bear market, what we're going through today is a decline from a high 
to a low of 20% or more. We've seen a fair amount of them. Again, one in every five years on historical average. Yet, and I used the word occasional before, yet there's, there's two factors here. One is that the overall return of what is a, a representation of the overall economy, which is the S&P 500, chugs along despite all of those frequent downturns that we see at about a 10% rate of return over long periods of time. Here's the kicker. The average bear market, average, historically, lasts about 13 or 14 months. So these are two things. These are occasional and they're temporary. And so, you know, when I, when I hear the question about what are the biggest threats, inflation is certainly the biggest, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Equally important, though, however, is doing something reactionary to the plan that you put in place. If you have a plan, you've identified your goals and objectives, you've put a plan in place to reflect that, you're confident with the, the strategy that's being put forth, that's, ident for example, identifying companies overall, generally, however you do it, that are diversified and are able to, at least historically speaking, your company knowing that they've outpaced inflation significantly over time, despite the occasional and temporary drops that we see, um, then you're on a, a really good path. Being reactionary during times like this, in our opinion, puts your long-term health financially in peril because we know that the markets can turn on a dime as they have just in the last few days, right? I mean, we've, we've been through a really tough year. We've had some positive months there mixed in. In the last few days, again, not, not to glean anything from that, the market and its movements are totally unpredictable in the short term. And But you don't want to be missing out when the market turns around. And so executing that plan, not being reactionary, um, is the right way to go. All right. So what do they do now? What do, what do, what do you, when we're sitting down doing an investment review and someone asks you, what should we do? Mm -hmm. What are you recommending? What is Beck Bodie recommending? Um, well, again, I, I want to preface this again. We have a pretty broad audience here, right? So everybody that's watching, we don't necessarily know. So, so take this as, as general as we intend it. But I think first, first and foremost, meet with your financial advisor and review in particular your goals and objectives. The plan actually doesn't mean anything until you've properly identified your goals and objectives first and foremost. That's number one in our book. Second, if you've done that you, and you've established a plan, let's take a look at the plan. Are you still on pace or with your financial advisor, are you still on pace to meet your financial objectives? Doesn't matter what necessarily the market is averaging. Doesn't matter what your brother-in-law is averaging or anybody or everybody else out there where you hear things, you know, about what's going on in the market or whose portfolio is doing what. All that matters is yours and whether or not you are on pace to meet what you've identified perhaps in the past as your main goals and objectives. And most folks that have gone through those two steps, the portfolio takes care of itself. We go through the ups and downs. Certainly, um, you know, the, you know, I can make that statement for folks that have gone through that process with us. But if you're somebody that's not a client or haven't gone through that process with us yet, Jim and I and the rest of the team highly, highly recommend that you spend the time. As Jim said, we're going to provide a link um, to uh, scheduling a meeting to review your goals and objectives, your financial plan, if you have one or establishing one, if you don't. And then and only then talking about how it's how the most proper way of funding your portfolio in terms of how you invest your money. So it sounds like like you're talking about football and the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And a quick disclaimer, um, Ben is not a Patriots fan and neither is Jim. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's preparing the right way for these types of situations so that we don't react when they actually happen so that we can resort back to our plan in the process that we've implemented for many years to see the outcome of long-term success mm -hmm. and not reacting to the short-term news or impulses that many investors fall um, fall in the trap of. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself, certainly. Um, and again, you would not be a human being if the last year has not 
affected you in some sort of way emotionally. But you just with all the things, Jim, you rightly brought up Ukraine and Russia and, you know, what's happened just as recently in Florida um, and all the things that we could come up with on this call, which we won't, but all the things that are stressors to not just the economy, but just our everyday lives. Mm. And, you know, if we look back through history, I mean, there have been always something very difficult going on in the world. And yet the economy, while it may have been disrupted in the short term, finds its way forward. And I think you have to get out of bed in the morning, you know, to be a successful investor. You don't have to like that, but you have to get out of the bed in the morning with a level of optimism about the future. Because history has proven that the markets are in a permanent and relentless upward trend line. And I said at the rate of about the S&P does about 10% a year. So you wouldn't be human if this wasn't uncomfortable to you right now. It's uncomfortable to anybody, I think, that's an investor right now. And nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But if you're optimistic about the productive capacity of human beings and the direction that the world is going in and all the technological advances and all the things that we could list today uh, and faith in each other, certainly we have, in our opinion, a very, very bright future. And so having that, those goals and objectives, having that plan in place mm. and the proper types of investments to actually fund your plan, not somebody else's, not some market index, but yours. Yeah. And, and, I, and then you brought up a great point there. And in the, in the email that everyone will be receiving is a link to set up a meeting. And the best thing you can do is not sit there and stress about it, but get on the phone, get in front of us, and let's talk about each individual plan and, and how the current market um, affects that plan with the expectation of what the future is going to bring. So, so following this webinar that we're wrapping up now, you will receive an email with a link to set up a call. Um, with one of our advisors on our team to answer any one-on-one -on -one questions that you might have. Um, ben, these are great to do. More to come of these on a regular basis. Um, so for now, we appreciate everyone joining and we will be hopefully hearing from many of you soon. Have a great afternoon.